<laughs> Great. Oh, hi everyone. I think we're we're starting. Um, my name is Jamie McLeod, and I'm the associate dean of student leadership on the student affairs team here at Richmond. I'm joined today by John and by Gonzalo. Hopefully, you can see them in the background. Um, and they're going to be speaking a little bit later. They're both current students. Just to mention um, what the Student Affairs team is, we do a lot of pastoral care on campus. We run events, we run activities, we work with our clubs on campus, we do peer mentoring, peer tutoring, internships, a whole range of activities and things. So really looking forward to anyone that, that is joining us to, to get involved and get engaged on campus through Student Affairs. Um, so just to get uh, started on the webinar, um, we're going to cover what it's like being on campus, um, some of the events we tend to have, the different clubs and societies we have, trips that we run and activities, a little bit about the kind of staff that we have on campus to support you, and then open it up to question and answer session. We're also going to have these guys um, talk from their perspective on campus as well. Um, so the first topic, um, what is it like being on campus? Well, I can talk from my perspective as a staff member, and I'm going to, but then I'm gonna have one of the current students um, interject as well, because um, I'm sure that their opinion is prob probably more important to you. Um, but for me, what it's like being on campus, well, these three pictures, I think, really um, capture what it's like. The first is that, that's actually a picture, obviously, of me and some of our student, student workers. Um, the first is that um, people are friendly, and it feels like a community, and people look out for each other. Um, so when I walk across campus, it's usually, hi, 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 hi. You're just saying hello to everyone that you know. People will notice if you're not having a good day or if you're feeling off and they ask how you're doing. Um, so it's great because you feel like you're part of this community, but then equally, it's big enough that you're not gonna know every single person. Um, so it's large enough that there's a really good mix. The next picture that you see on the screen um, is of the main building on campus. You might've seen it before. Um, and it's on in orientation day, actually. Um, and I just think that captures the main hub on the Richmond campus. Um, there's a lot of um, classroom space in there. There are dorms. Um, and I think it's a, it's a real hub of activity throughout the year for students. And then the third picture shows um, at the right next to Richmond is a very large, beautiful park. Um, and it shows a picture of some of our student leaders um, going for a walk during their training week at break in between sessions, um, really exploring the park. And I think that's what's really nice about Richmond. So you have um, our campus in Richmond, which is for students in their first two years of study, and you're really getting acclimated to maybe life in the UK or life in London in this sort of suburban environment. So Richmond itself is a really pretty busy town, but then you have beautiful green spaces like the park pictured on the screen. Um, but you have great links and connections to London. So when you are ready for that transition to Kensington, which would be for your last two years, um, you're ready to maybe get into central London a bit more, a bit busier sort of area. Um, so to me, it's a sort of this mix of community and this hub and the leafy green spaces um, is what Richmond means to me. We also have a gym on campus. We bring in sometimes um, outside speakers or outside instructors to lead, say, yoga or activities like that. So to me, this is what it kind of means. But I'll, I'll hand it over to John just to talk briefly <laughs> about um, what it's like being on campus, especially as he works in residence life. Sure. Hi. So I'm John. So in my experience, some of the best parts about living on campus are that everything is nearby. So the campus itself is relatively small. All of your first and second year classes are going to be either in the building that you're living in or relatively nearby. So you're not going to have to go very far away at all. Um, as for, somebody, uh, for somebody like me who kind of grew up in a small town, Richmond is a really good fit for that where you're not immediately in one of the largest cities in Europe but you kind of have a smaller town to kind of get acclimated to. Um, but uh, London is actually close enough where you can get there in 45 minutes. So I think Richmond offers a really good mixture of, of that small town feel with being close enough to everything else going on in the city. Perfect. Um, and I was just going to say, it's the best of both worlds. Um, and, and one part that I forgot to mention is that we're a really diverse campus. So when you even walk across from the library to the main building, um, you might hear Swedish, you might hear German or Spanish or Italian, English. Um, but people don't stay in those groups. You know, people really mix it up. Um, and it's just lovely to hear and lovely to see. 
So moving on to the next slide, I wanted to mention some of the events we run on campus and off campus. Um, these are by no means all of them, but I think some of these are really the highlights. So the first and foremost is orientation, and I have a whole slide devoted to that, so we might be able to skip over that one just for now. Um, but we also run events that connect us to the local community. So we run Halloween on the Hill, which is a really fun event because um, our students decorate the hallways, um, they have different stations in the main building, and then we invite like local children, local families on campus, and they do face painting and trick-or-treating and pumpkin decorating. And it's just like a really sweet event to connect us to the local community. And I think the kids, the, sorry, the students really get excited about it as well. Um, another big event that we run is International Night. It happens in the spring. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we have a great, really diverse um, community. So um, it's sort of like a talent show, but with an international flavor to it. Um, last year, for example, we had a, a girl um, who's a native English speaker sing um, a song, a beautiful song in Japanese fully. Um, we had a French student sing The Little Mermaid. Um, we had an American student do break dancing. I mean, it was like a whole range and mix. It was really fun. Um, so we're doing our event this year um, in Notting Hill um, in March. So we're all really looking forward to that. Another big event um, that's part of student life here on campus is Honors Night. And Honors Night um, is celebrated at a fancy hotel in Richmond. Um, we invite students who have made the dean's list or who are being awarded and recognized for their work on campus, whether because they're a peer mentor or work in residence life or peer tutor or run a club. Um, and it's a night for everybody to celebrate their achievements um, and also, um, you know, hobnob with some of the deans and have a really good three course meal. So it's a really fun night um, that we run as well. Spring Fest is um, an annual event where the campus, the Richmond campus sort of turns into a carnival like atmosphere. We bring some rides on campus, um, we have stands, um, and like I said, we sort of this free for all all day of kind of like a mix. We have a barbecue, so the catering team worked really hard to bring out all the food outside on a nice day and um, we have a barbecue outside. So it's a really fun event a lot of the students look forward to every year. Those are just some big events I wanted to give as examples. Um, but we also have theme days and theme weeks. Um, so another example would be uh, the 1st of March is actually University Mental Health Day. Um, and so it happens to actually fall this year within our midterms. Um, so really we're trying to emphasize um, a bit about, you know, work, working through anxiety, working through exam stress, um, giving out candy, giving out smoothies and <laughs> treats to kind of calm people, um, letting them know about the resources we do have on campus if they are struggling, if they are facing some mental health issues, um, and also resources off campus. We, we haven't quite gotten approval yet, but we're hoping to get some therapy dogs on campus as well <laughs> during that time. So as you can see for this particular day, this particular theme, we have a lot going on. So this is just one example, but we have lots of different theme days and weeks throughout the year. Our clubs on campus also run events. Um, I will talk about them in a moment. Um, but just an example from that, um, we had a fashion show last year. So we, had a, we have a fashion society and they decided to run a, a proper fashion show um, and raise money for charity. Um, so the main building turned into a runway. <laughs> and it was just so neat because it was completely student run and it was a great experience for those students really putting it on. Um, and it was such a success and it was covered in the local, um, local press. So um, the clubs run their own events and it's just absolutely lovely when everyone gets involved. Uh, but I'll talk about clubs a bit more in a moment. Um, residence life events. So for students living on campus, you have people like John who are <laughs> residence life staff um, and they run their own events within the dorms or their hallways. Um, so for their residents. Um, one example is I know recently there was a Super Bowl party, which I was really happy about because I'm from Philadelphia. <laughs> um, but, um, sorry, any Patriots fans out there. <laughs> but, um, the point is it gets everyone in the dorm together and they're all having a good time. Um, another event that happened recently, um, what I suppose in November was Thanksgiving. So someone ran a Thanksgiving dinner for their residents. And again, they're bonding as a cohort and they're really enjoying it. Um, I, I'm just trying to think, you know, there are lots of, well, I'll let John talk a little bit later about um, some of the residents' life um, activities that go on, but those are just some examples. Um, 
student government events. So I have actually behind me the student government president, <laughs> and I'm having I'm going to have Gonzalo speak a little bit later a bit more about that. Um, but student government do a great job of putting on a lot of activities, um, also off campus activities. Um, so it's open to all students, um, social events and things like that. So they're very active and really passionate about making sure our students have a great time and feel supported and represented um, on campus. So it's a lot of events, a lot to take in, but um, it basically the, the takeaway is that there's a lot going on, whether it's on campus or off campus, and really it's, it's a busy, fun um, environment. Um, so I wanted to focus in on one event in particular, our orientation event. Um, so I wanted to focus on this because I think this is one of the most important events you could have in the in uh, the course of the year because it's your first year introduction um, to Richmond um, and really it has four aims it's first getting getting used to campus getting used to London if, if you're from within the UK but not from London or just getting used to the UK in general um, making sure you have a good head start in terms of academics and getting registered and then lastly, having fun and having a good time and making friends and getting acclimated. Um, and so orientation happens the week before classes start. Um, and we organize lots of sessions um, for, again, either academic wise or practical information on how do I set up a bank account? How do I set, get a cell phone in the UK? Um, getting those questions answered, um, meeting with an advisor that type of thing, um, so that you feel really set and ready to go and prepared for when you start um, classes. Um, but then we run lots of fun events. There's a picture, so the top picture is actually of Richmond. Um, it's just uh, part of the town center on the Thames. And then actually the bottom picture is one of the uh, social activities we run during orientation. It's a, a boat party that we ran this past year. And obviously the students are having a lot of fun. Um, so a lot of our student um, activities or social activities are student led. It gives you all a chance to bond. Um, we do have one or two parent sessions so that the students can go off and, and bond and get to know each other. And then parents can obviously get their questions answered as well. So I did want to highlight orientation because I, I think that's your first introduction and segue to Richmond and it is so important. Clubs and societies. Um, so the number of clubs and societies actually fluctuates throughout the year because people suddenly become passionate about something and want to start something and I'm like, hooray, great. Um, so I help them get started with it. But um, I would say at the moment we have around 18 clubs, active clubs and societies. And they really range from um, clubs that are more academic geared. So for example, in the top um, photo left corner, there is a picture from a Richmond Psychological Association um, conference that they ran this past autumn. Um, and so we have RPA, which is obviously for students interested in psychology. Um, we have an International Affairs Society. Um, we have sports teams, so in the um, bottom left picture, it's our, some of the, the guys from our football team and our basketball team. Um, we have Art Exhibition Society. They go out and visit local galleries. Um, we have a green project um, club, and so their job is basically um, to make sure that we're working on environmental projects. They're going out into the local community. They visit a local river and do some cleanup work. And then on the right side, we have a picture from our Great British, British Bake Off Society. Um, I think they call it Great British Bake Show in the US. Um, though it looks like our student Nada is maybe not having a great time <laughs> with the, the mixture she's making. Um, but I know that they have a lot of fun. Um, so there's lots of clubs. I've just given you a sample. Um, sometimes they collaborate with each other. So for example, um, the Great British Bake Off Society um, works with green projects. So when green projects are done with their river cleanups and they're tired and they're cold, they get a little bit cleaned up and um, Bake Off have provided um, treats for them. So that it's a little bit of a reward at the end of a hard day's work. Um, we have, again, I mentioned International Affairs Society. So they might talk about serious topics and current events, but they also just went to the pub the other day to watch the opening of the Olympics together. Um, so the clubs are really about learning, but also about having fun and getting to know peers that have similar interests. If you come to Richmond and you realize there's something you're passionate about, but you don't see a club or society for it, 
come talk to me. I love it when, when students start new clubs. We've just had one start recently. There was a student passionate about international security and wanting more experience with it. So he started a security studies research club and is working with professors on campus. Um, so there's a lot of activities and societies to get involved in. Trips. So while you're at Richmond, you may want to explore London, you may want to explore the UK, and you probably want to explore other parts of Europe. And there are a range of trips um, on offer. So for example, there are some trips that are co-curricular. A professor may want to take their class to a gallery or take their class to a museum and really bring the, the learning and the teaching to life. Um, so that often happens quite frequently. Um, we also have professors maybe that lead trips. Um, for, for example, in the, in the picture, the top left corner, um, it's students who have an interest in international relations. And there was a professor that led a trip um, to The Hague in, in the Netherlands um, and met with lots of different international organizations. So they might lead a trip where they know there's an interest there for some students because of their major or interest in terms of their career. Um, sometimes trips are led by clubs or other students. So for example, art exhibition society will go to local galleries, um, as I mentioned earlier, or a professor might lead them on, you know, an East End London um, street art sort of walking tour, which was really cool. Um, we also have fun trips. Uh, if you're a Harry Potter fan, I know I am. Um, we have, you know, we connect with local tour groups and have the Harry Potter walking tour or the globe tour or let's go visit Oxford for the day. Our student affairs staff also organize trips. Um, so I led a trip to Ireland last spring. There's a picture of it on a screen and it was so much fun. It was really great. And I've been in Europe for 10 years now and I've been to Ireland before, but really it was a great chance to see places I'd never seen before. And I know the kids really enjoyed it. Um, so we went to all over Ireland. We're on a tour bus. Um, we had really great different experiences. We got to hold lambs. We got to see the Guinness factory. There was a lot going on. Um, and so I know the students really um, thought it was a special experience. Um, but these are just, I put on the screen some recent examples of places we've been to in the past year or places that we're going to. Um, so really these change every year, but some trips remain really popular. Um, so a really great part because I think if the learning doesn't just take place inside the classroom, it really takes place um, outside of it on these trips as well. I wanted to give some brief introductions regarding the, the student affairs staff. Um, just so you're aware of the kind of support we have on offer, um, Allison Cole Stutz is my supervisor. She's the vice president for student affairs and the dean of students. She's a lovely lady, um, very approachable, uh, meets with students often, meets with um, parents, etc. So a really great resource and the head of our team. Um, we work with Jason Elliott, who if you have any questions about financial aid or scholarships is very helpful. There's myself. Um, Catherine is in our, our team. She helps with you know, visa inquiries that come up, um, as well as helping to plan some of those trips I mentioned. Oliver Brady um, is based at the Richmond campus and he's here for all your residential needs. So he works with John and other residence life staff members um, in terms of the dorms and placement and you know, all of that fun stuff. And then Chelsea um, is based at the Kensington campus. Two people who aren't pictured, um, they're recent additions. We have Cecile, who is working on our internship program. So within Student Affairs, we work on internships, which is something you might worry about a little bit later on. Um, and we also have a new person joining us, Dan, who will be based at the Kensington um, campus as well. So lots of support. Um, and, and another group to mention is that we do work with um, trained professional counselors that do come to campus if students feel they need that extra bit of support as well. Now, last but not least, I do want to mention our student staff. Um, they make up a really important part of, of what we do and of the running of Richmond, I have to say. So just very briefly to touch on it, we have a group called Peer Mentors. Um, they're a group I work with. Um, each peer mentor is assigned to a first year class of students and um, really act as this sort of um, in-between person. If, if a student's not sure, they're not quite ready or shy about asking a professor something, they can talk to a peer mentor. I'm looking at Gonzalo, because besides <laughs> being student government president, he also is a peer mentor. Um, and they can present in the class, they can remind students of upcoming 
um, important dates happening within the university. Um, so they're a really important liaison, and I think it's a really great program because it's good to have an older student that they can go to as first year students and chat with and find support with. Um, very similar and tied to that is residence life staff. Um, so John being residence life staff member will know that um, living on campus, he offers that pastoral care support while they're here. You know, if you wake up at two in the morning and you really feel unwell and you're not sure what to do, you know, talking to um, a residence life staff member as well. And besides running the activities and the, and the games and the things that they do um, within the dorms. Just to mention, we, we have a lot of student workers on campus, whether it's in the library or other departments. In our department, we have student workers that you might see and are, again, a great resource. Um, we also have peer tutors. These are students, again, maybe older students that have already taken a course, done really well with it, and the faculty member uh, recommends them. So if you're struggling, say, with calculus, um, we have Gonzalo, a peer tutor. He does a lot of uh, activities, um, you know, for example, is a peer tutor. Um, and you can sit with them. It's absolutely for free. The university pays for it and you can sit with them and help prepare for um, class, for exams, etc. Um, so we have peer tutors in a range of topics and you just have to come see me and I set you up with them. So there's a lot of support also from your peers is, is the takeaway really from this slide as well. Peer mentor staff and student um, res life staff are, are both involved at orientation, I should say, as well. Okay. <sighs> I've done a lot of talking, um, but I'm just going to hand it over perhaps to John first and then to Gonzalo to just talk from their perspectives as current students and also people really engaged on campus. Sure. So I'll start off. Hi again. I'm John. So I'm a resident advisor here on campus. So as an RA, part of my responsibilities include providing, providing a safe and a happy environment for everyone here and for helping to kind of build communities to bring everybody together. That's one of the things that I think Richmond does really well. I showed up uh, two years ago now, didn't know anybody at all in a country I had never been before, but I felt, I felt like I fit in immediately. It was a really good, it's a really good environment to find yourself in, uh, especially if you don't know where you're going, what you're looking for, you'll find people to help you out real quick. Perfect, so hi guys, I came say my name is Gonzalo and I'm the current student government president, peer mentor, and a peer tutor, so yeah, I do like to be involved <laughs> on campus, but yeah, just a brief introduction about me. I arrived at Richmond two years ago, back in January 2016. So I transferred from uh, an amateur at American University in Spain because I fell in love with the city, the city I'm in right now. And I'm sure John did the same thing when he came from America just as an AFS student. A uh, brief introduction about me. My major is economics with a minor in accounting and finance. So yeah, I do love math. I do love, I do love numbers. So any questions, if I see you next semester, obviously you can ask me in regards of that. Uh, just a quick uh, description of what I do as a student government president. So first thing, I represent you guys. So I'm here to, as your first point of contact, if you need me for any queries in regards of any critiques about, I don't know, you don't like your economics professor, I can help you out with that. Mm -hmm. We can have a word with them or with the associate team. We also organize a ton of events, not just off campus, but on campus with rest life. For example, the Super Bowl event was along with uh, the RT of Montford and with uh, student government, we organize Valentine's Day parties, we have uh, St. Patrick's Day party coming up in March, we have the Winter Bowl, that, that is also an annual event, big event where everybody has the chance of wearing a black tie event. So yeah, get bow tie, get your dancing shoes next semester, <laughs> yeah, I, want to, I want everybody to come along to that. Uh, what else do I do? I'm peer mentor, like Jamie said, yes, I'm here uh, to assist you guys in your first year, because again, a university, coming here all the way to London, it is a big step, it's a big chapter in your life. And it is the best one, as Jamie can maybe, like if you send her an email, I think she can tell you when she came to Glasgow, she came to Scotland, but it is a big step. So any questions or anything, you can shoot an email to John and I, I'm sure we can give you our emails, but any, anyways, I hope I see you in the fall 2018, if anything, but seriously, welcome, like come to London, you're gonna love it, <laughs> you're gonna love Richmond, even though it's a small institution, it's a big family. Yeah. That's perfect. Um, and I just want to reiterate, because actually you made a great point. Um, we do, I forgot to mention earlier, we do have housing on campus in the main building. Um, and then we also have some dorms just down the street. It takes two minutes to walk there. I was there earlier today. Um, so um, we do have this, this sort of close-knit community within Richmond. And it's really nice, because then when you go to Kensington, it is a bit of a change and you're ready for that change, but you'll still have your Richmond family um, with you and still run into people you know. So I think that's it for, for me for now, um, but let's see if we have 
any questions? Oh, one last point is that if you haven't applied yet, <laughs> um, the application deadline is the 1st of March. Um, so I did want to mention that. But did anyone have any questions, whether it's with events, student life, clubs on campus? I'll just wait a minute for people to Feel free. start thinking. Feel free, now's the time yeah. to ask. What did, I mean, if I ask you guys, what did you feel about like orientation? How did you feel it went for you? Did it kind of reassure you? What was I that like? I have a very different experience. You can say all full. <laughs> I, I came in spring, so. Okay. True. Uh, so um, a little bit, a uh, little background. So when I came here, I was only supposed to be here for just the semester. I was going to a military school back in the States and I thought I would just do a semester abroad and I showed up here and I think it was first during orientation where I'm like, I really like it here. And that's, I decided to transfer here because of that. So yeah, I think the orientation process, it can seem a little overwhelming at first. You show up after a, you know, goodness knows how long your flight was. <laughs> you show up, you're tired. And um, all of a sudden you're just overwhelmed by all this information, but everybody there is so helpful. They show you exactly what to do. Any questions you have, there's a dozen people immediately you can answer it. So it's, it, it really sets your mind at ease. Perfect. Um, we, we do have a question following that, and it's, do you guys have a lot of fun? I mean, from a staff perspective, <laughs> I have a lot of fun. I laugh every single day. I love working with students, but I will let these two. I'm uh, sure it was directed towards them. That was good. From my perspective, I can say this is my third year at Richmond, so I'm graduating in a year time. I do have a lot of fun, so I don't know about John's perspective, but I get involved in campus because I enjoy it. I love helping people. And then Richmond is a lot of fun. You actually get to know your peers very closely. Again, like I said, small school but then you get to know your teachers you get to know your Anna, your peers john the rest of the team mm -hmm. so yeah i do have a lot of fun especially with events with classes i don't know what is your like opinion on that? like mm -hmm. i do have a lot of fun like obviously you'll be here shorter <laughs> than me mm -hmm. yeah no i i have to agree there's plenty of opportunities i mean just about anything that you want to do any pastimes that you would have if you like playing sports there's opportunities for that if you like you know joining clubs there's plenty of opportunities to do that just hanging out with friends there's ample for that so yeah you, honestly you can have fun doing just, just about anything here so a lot of opportunities the last thing london is one of the greatest cities i've ever seen in my life so <laughs> yeah absolutely london is great and there's plenty of to do, do like jamie said there's museums there's concerts mm -hmm. there's football games american football come here as well <laughs> so yeah that, uh, basketball as well the nba comes here as well so there's a lot a lot to do in london yeah. Sightseeing, sometimes the best thing to do is just to walk around London. Yeah. Just to take everything in and find something Public transport is amazing. You can get anywhere. Yeah. Any, any other questions? One question might be, what do you think it's like going to university with such a different mix of people and like people from different countries? Like, How do you think you benefited or changed from that? It's amazing. Like, I'm used to it because I went to boarding school for like mm -hmm. I don't know how long it was, six years, so I'm kind of used to it, but now that I'm in this university, it's even more diverse, like our motto says United in Diversity, but yeah, if you think about it, my group of friends are made of Austrian, American, Filipino, Australian, so yeah, it is a great mix and a great way of learning new culture, so yeah. What about you? Because obviously you came from a military school, so maybe you've made <laughs> it's, Americans. It honestly was. Yeah, I came from a mostly mostly American, mostly Southern military school. So coming here, immediately you notice just how diverse you have people from all over the world. And it really does just broaden your perspectives. You can start to see things from a lot more different you from a lot uh, from a lot <laughs> from a lot more perspectives, a lot different perspectives, how somebody, you know, somebody from Southeast Asia would think versus somebody from you know Scandinavia so it's it's really interesting to get to know people from all over who have all these different experiences and that really can help shape and grow your experiences as well okay. well maybe we'll leave it one more second if there's any final questions especially for these guys Ooh, oh okay okay yeah. you can answer that <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, I mentioned earlier, we have a member of our team, um, Cecile, who works on our internship program. So the question is about um, you know, internships for, for Richmond students. Yeah, absolutely. So when you get to a certain stage within your Richmond career, when you have enough um, coursework Sorry, and credits right done, um, yeah, Gonzalo's yeah, right gonna now, be embarking yeah. on this, um, you can talk to Cecile about doing an internship um, you know, as part of your, your academics here at Richmond. Um, 
And have you been placed already or not quite I yet? am currently in the process. I'm about to interview very soon. So yeah, no, at, yeah. At, a, at a UK company. Yeah, I'm at, yeah, in London. So what Jimmy hasn't mentioned, yes, English companies want us, but also there's opportunities to go to Asia, to go to Barcelona, Paris, the US, I think. And then Asia, there's a few yeah, opportunities. Right. I think one of my friends went to Shanghai, for, oh, yeah. go Beijing to that internship. So yeah. Many, many companies want Richmond students so do not like feel like, oh, if I come to Richmond, I'm not going to get an internship. Oh, yeah, you are. People want us. And alumni are always keen of hiring us as well. Yeah, and I was going to say, Cecile, I've shared an office with her for a bit. She definitely takes the time mm -hmm. to get to know you, get to know your yeah. goals, looks at your resume or helps you turn it into a CV, which is what they use in Europe, um, and try and find the right fit for you. So maybe not something you would do you know, immediately, but it's something to think about um, later on, definitely. Great question. Okay. Can many students go on to UK? Yeah. Yeah, so the question is, um, do students go on to do graduate degrees in the UK? Absolutely, you can do that. Um, that's that's completely fine and something that I think um, a lot of students are, you know, maybe considering, especially mm -hmm. if they've yeah. made the leap over here for their undergrad, they may consider staying because they like it so much. So. Um, I've definitely had a conversation with one of our recent graduates in December, and she's applying for programs all across the UK. So, you know, and um, Richmond also has its own um, <laughs> plug for Richmond graduate programs um, as well to consider. Also, to add to that, I'm currently thinking of doing a graduate degree. Mm -hmm. So, in October, I'm thinking of applying to a master's in finance. I'll be staying here in the UK, either in London, Cambridge, Oxford, I don't know, whatever. Like, I know, life takes me at the end of the day. So. <laughs> And I know I'm not ready to graduate yet, but I know several, <laughs> another year, but it's coming up quick. But I know several of my um, fellow uh, members on ResLife are looking at getting their degrees uh, here as well. Most of them are from the States. So yes, those opportunities are absolutely there. They're absolutely available. All you have to do is go after them. Any other questions? I think maybe someone's typing. Yeah, I think maybe someone's typing. Coming. No, maybe, <laughs> maybe not. Well, if, if you do have any further questions, I'm sure you can get in touch with admissions. Um, and if it's to do with student life, they're more than welcome to forward it um, on to us to, to answer. But thank you for tuning in and listening to us. And we really hope to see you soon. Bye. <laughs>